Hey guys, it's Veron from Speak of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today, we are doing another installment in the Flora series, this time for the month of April. And you may notice that the angle is a bit different today. I was trying out this new spider tripod thing that vloggers use usually. And I decided to try it out for the sketching, uh, what is it, the sex sketching section just to see if it will work out. The problem being I don't have a lot of desk space as you can as you can see like my laptop is already sort of near and it, the tripod itself casts a shadow here in the left hand corner so I need to either buy a light that would shine um, towards the camera and give it a little, a little bit more um, what do you call that lighting I don't know something like that I need, I need more light basically so I'll still be using mostly the top-down view. I might use that um, zoomed-in view occasionally when I remember to do it, but I don't know how often I'll be able to use it. Anyway, so for April, the flowers were the sweet tea or the daisy. And supposedly, the flowers for April should represent love, youth, and purity. Sweet tea um, is specific to have a symbol or to represent goodbyes and departures, well, Daisy represents innocence. And I'm more familiar with a Daisy, it's like a more common flower. Uh, the sweet pea, I only sort of recognized it when I saw the pictures, but I noticed that a lot of the flowers for the Flora series or the birth flowers in general tend to have like really positive. Um, sweet vibes and emotions to it so like a lot of them deal with love or purity or innocence um i wanted to go a bit different today so i chose the sweet pea instead of the daisy um so it does mean goodbye and departure and i don't know this um it is something different to do because how do you put this back when i was young i used to draw a lot of like really dramatic and sad scenes just for the heck of it like i wasn't really dealing with any of sad or dramatic emotions myself but the characters in the situations they put them in uh would end up with a lot of dramatic and sad scenes i guess or like just drama in general like my characters are all okay like no one's really dead or anything but there's a lot of drama <clears throat> there's a lot of drama in their lives and then my got to college so that was high school when i got to college i started drawing a bit more um nicer and happier pieces i guess to deal with all the stress from college i don't know so i stopped doing those dramatic pieces for a very long time so i haven't really drawn anyone sad in a very long while <laughs> so it is it is refreshing because like all the other pieces were like light and fresh and would invite the viewer in. Uh, for Sweet Pea, since the character's back is facing us, the viewer, and the expression on her face gives a more, um, like, like, stay away vibes, or again, departure vibes, it sort of like pushes the viewer away, which is interesting. Um, yeah, it is interesting to work on. So, another thing I did decide to switch up for this piece was um, the line weights. So I usually use a 3, up on Pigma Micron at least, uh, for the little Pigma Microns I would use usually the 3 or 0 0.3 nib or weight. Um, for the other pens I used to use a 5 or a 3 as well. Uh, for this piece I used a 1 which is really a new experience of sorts. I only used this 1 for like really tiny details but I realized that I was sort of overwhelming my drawing with line art so I switched to a one just to see how I could deal with it. It was surprisingly nice to use so I might switch to a one or it depends on the piece actually. If it's a big piece like my watercolor pieces I might keep to three or at least two but we'll see. I'll try it out for the other um, sizes of canvases and then we'll see how it works out. But I really do like how the one turned out. 
the lines look very delicate and it doesn't really overwhelm the piece. And I would also go in with the 3 to add some line weight and definition to some parts, but it was mostly just the one. So I like how it turned out. We'll see how it turns out. So I think you might have noticed in the original sketch, she was supposed to be wearing like a really flowy skirt while um, flowing along her suitcase. And then I realized, oh, this is very bad ever garden. Like, like the original thumbnail that I drew had her with long hair in the dress. And the original image was like she had blonde hair and like a really flowy dress. And then I thought, oh, that's bad at ever garden. So I switched the outfit a little bit. I gave her short brown hair and uh, pinkish eyes. Since I also realized that a lot of my drawings for the series have a lot of like long hair and really pretty dresses or skirts, so I switched it up a little bit for departure or for sweet pea, you know, since it's kind of different from the rest of the series anyway. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. So she's obviously wearing jeans, but supposedly the jacket was supposed to be a jean or denim material as well. I didn't quite get the color right, and I didn't want it to look too similar to her pants, so I guess it's just like a blue jacket of sorts. <laughs> the interesting thing is, with the Flora series, since there's a lot of flowers, and a lot of them had very sweet themes, I ended up using pink a lot, which is, isn't very common, um, for me at least. I tend to use a blue and paints gray a lot for my pieces, but and red maybe I guess, but pink isn't very common in my work. So I guess it's really pushing my color creamy or my color palette out. I still use a lot of blue. I guess it's just a matter of preference, but I guess eventually I would like to also use my greens more. Uh, I've been using the yellows a lot also for sunlight, so. I want to use the more earthy tones like the greens, the browns, um, yeah, mostly in those colors. So maybe May is Lily of the Valley, so we'll see what I can do actually. I want to start using more colors and I think I sort of mentioned that they have a new, yeah I did, I have a new resolution video. Um, I mentioned it there that I wanted to use more color palettes that are just mm -hmm. it's my alarm. Anyway. So at first I wanted her to go out to a more like a field or a sky view, but I ended up coloring the entire area blue. And I found it interesting since I thought, hey, why don't I just color the the gate, the area within the gate blue, and then within the lattice is blue to make it look like a portal of sorts. And then it felt a bit lacking, like the piece wasn't finished and it didn't really I don't know how do they put this. It felt unfinished and that the balance of the piece didn't look right. So I would eventually go and color the background blue as well. And it made it more interesting to look at. And right now it feels really heavy on the bottom part near the flowers. But when I add the blue on top uh, for the sky, it does really look more balanced and not too heavy on one side. I think I have a cold. I'm not sure. Or I just woke up when I'm recording this, so it's probably that too. Hmm. So, we made the end of the video, the PV is coming up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to see more similar content. I do a lot of anime, uh, traditional digital artworks, fan art, stuff like that. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or DeviantArt, and I will see you around.